Hey, e-commerce Fastlane listeners, thanks for tuning in today. Just before we get started, today's show is made possible by our friends at Support Zebra. Now you can grow your Shopify powered business with Support Zebra's outsourced services tailored specifically for direct to consumer brands. They're trusted by hundreds of startups, including some of the biggest and fastest growing D2C retailers. They excel in managing many critical functions, such as sales conversion, card abandonment, customer retention, order tracking and returns, live chat, bill payment recovery, and even email ticketing. They manage your pre and your post-purchase customer service experience. This allows you and your team to more focus on your core operations. With Support Zebra, you're not just outsourcing, you're actually extending your team with highly skilled English speaking agents who are ready to serve your customers across multiple channels in all time zones. Stop the worry of scaling customer service and improve your customer support experience while slashing costs by 50%. You heard me right, 50% lower costs on the pre and the post purchase customer service experience all through supportzebra.com. Now, a huge thanks to Support Zebra for sponsoring today's episode. And now let's shift gears and welcome our next sponsor, retention.com. Are you looking to recover more lost shoppers on your Shopify store? Retention.com is here to help you with their identity resolution software that significantly improves your Klaviyo flow revenue by two to three X. Now they help expand your email list by identifying over 80% of your anonymous website visitors and get this, even if they haven't filled out a form. Now retention.com knows these potential customers and shares their email address in a thanks for visiting our site Clavio sequence. You can lower your acquisition cost, you can acquire more customers, and you can skyrocket your revenues. I highly, highly recommend retention.com to turn your anonymous shoppers into revenue. Now get a quick demo and a special trial offer at ecommercefastlane.com forward slash retention. That's ecommercefastlane.com forward slash retention. A big thanks to our sponsors for supporting the show. Now let's dive into today's episode. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. I'm your host, Steve Hutt. And today we're joined by a leader in the influencer marketing space. Her name is Esther Kim. She's the CEO of a company called Maven Reach and they're at mavenreach.com. Now, Esther began her kind of market research and I'd call it even data analytics kind of background, working with a lot of Fortune 100 companies and she recognized over the years that there's a potential for digital content creators. And so she made a kind of a pivot or a shift to social media campaigns, really to bring a lot of these global brands into the kind of the digital spotlight. Now, Maven Reach was founded in 2021, and it really was a response both to what she found as a gap in the market, really to make influencer marketing much more accessible for small and mid-sized kind of direct-to-consumer brands. Instead of a typical kind of one-size-fits-all solution, Maven Reach goes down a little different solution. They tailor for influencer campaigns that are really more focused on the affordability. And one thing that's fantastic is they really make sure that there is a brand and influencers are actually tightly matched. It's not just a transaction, it really is brand ambassadors. So it's really quite amazing how they're able to find the right people. Their approach really is hands-on, it's very customized. They integrate directly with your team and any systems that you currently have. End of the day, they manage the campaigns from start to finish, really, and this boosts a lot of a brand awareness and sales, but the best part is, it frees up a lot of your own internal resources you know, as a brand founder or as a marketer. Really, you can focus on other strategic initiatives while Maven Reach will handle a lot of the influencer strategy. So 
Today, we're going to explore how Maven Reach really is changing the influencer marketing game, I'd say. They really do focus on what's referred to as micro-influencers. She believes, I agree too, that it really it is the future. And Esther's background and beliefs really are shaping the success of this company and how they can help you. So hi, Esther. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I mentioned it at the top of the show, but it's always best in the founder's own words. But to start us off, could you briefly describe the Maven Reach, the company, and then the problems that you're solving for Shopify brands today? At Maven Reach, our goal is to truly take influencer marketing off of your plate. Our services can range anywhere between product seeding, campaign management, UGC for paid ads and social channels, Everything from brand ambassador programs, community management, YouTube reviews, product placement, even the Amazon influencer program. So we do a lot and we're, again, really here to take this off of your plate. Now, every company has its roots and a founding story. Could you share a little bit about the journey of Maven Reach and the inspiration behind its inception? So I originally started my career at a market research firm. And I was providing data-driven insights and recommendations on product launches, segmentation studies, and customer journey mapping studies for Fortune 100 companies. And over the years, I really saw this rise and impact of content creators in the digital media landscape. So I transitioned to developing competitive social media campaigns and solutions for brands globally. The genesis of Maven Reach is, honestly, it started during COVID. I am a woman, and I'm also a minority. I am Korean American. And during COVID, I saw, unfortunately, a lot of minority founded and women founded brands closing up shop. Seeing this, it broke my heart. I really wanted to provide an affordable solution to help the brand and meet the brand where they are. So how I did this was I figured out a way, okay, let's brainstorm and figure out a way to take time consuming tasks off a brand's plate. And I'm sure everyone understands influencer marketing is very time consuming. And at Maven Reach, we're here to work as an extension of your team. And honestly, we come on as an agency, as contractors. So that really helps on saving on staffing and it helps elevate the role of your current marketing employees to help them focus on strategy and we can focus on execution. This in turn helps with retention and even employee satisfaction. So that is the genesis of Maven Reach. And I'm really glad that we're able to help brands continue to grow. Now, many brands that I've worked with over the years have, I say, never even touched influencer marketing at all. They're scared. They feel there's no ROI. They don't know how to track it. That just adds another task to their marketing playbook. But what's the best advice today for founders who may want to get involved with influencer marketing? My golden nugget for newbies is to test the waters with authenticity. You want to find influencers who align with your brand values. And it's honestly not just about numbers. It's about creating genuine connections. You just have to try it. You have to test it or else you'll never know the value of influencer marketing. And to be honest, it is a longer term investment. You know, someone needs to see your brand seven times before they make a purchase. And influencer marketing allows for the humanization of your brand. UGC, user-generated content, it's nine times more impactful than macro influencer content and delivers a 28% higher engagement rate on social. So the numbers are there. 93% of consumers find UGC helpful when making purchasing decisions. So my best piece of advice, you got to test it. Now, you specialize in micro-influencer marketing, but can you explain for our audience and myself just to understand the different types of influencers? I mean, I think at the top of the food chain would be like the celebrity endorsers with the tens of millions, sometimes 100 million followers, and then we work our way down. And I know that you're seeing incredible results with the micro-influencer side. So let's talk a bit about what the different levels are and why, and then results are so great from your perspective with micro-influencers? Ooh, I love this question. So micro is the new macro. Smaller followings means higher engagement and trust. 
your audience is way more likely to buy in when they feel a personal connection with an influencer. You know, micro influencers, they're more collaborative. You know, we've worked with larger creators before, but time and time again, we find that micro influencers are more collaborative, more flexible, budget friendly. They're invested in these long term partnerships. And honestly, they're just more excited to work with the brand. At Maven Reach, we define micro as anyone under 100,000 followers, which is pretty loose from our experience. If, like, let's say you just launched your brand and the website, it's, you know, not that great. You know, you have maybe a hundred followers on Instagram. If we partner, I will recommend that we focus with influencers with maybe five to 30,000 followers just to get the ball rolling. Another great feature about micro influencers is there are no gatekeepers involved. You know, they're not behind an agency or a manager that's negotiating on behalf of them, unlike macro creators. And usually when you follow up for usage rights, micro influencers are flattered and there's no gatekeeper advising them to sell usage rights. So micro is a new macro. Now, if a brand listening today agrees with you that it's worth testing micro influencers for their business, a couple of questions I have for you is how much money do they need to invest to test this out? And then how much time does it take to start seeing some impact and results? Uh, yes, the big question. I'll say it varies, but we can always start small. Our services can range between 1500 up to $5,000, depending on the scope of the campaign. And one thing I always like to throw out there is that you also have to factor in the cost of the product and the cost of shipping the product. Some of my clients will cap how many products we can ship a month. Even if that's the case, we'll continue sourcing on their behalf to queue up for the products to get for the following month. So a great example is we had a home appliance client who was gifting HEPA air filters and his price point was around $700. As you can imagine, every influencer we reached out to was, yes, I'm interested. I will give you free content in exchange for this. But when the perceived value of the product is higher than maybe $200, $250, the brand has more sway in what the deliverables are. When the product value is maybe under the $200, $250 price point, I usually recommend a no-strings-attached approach. And a lot of my clients are very surprised at the quality of content that comes through. So in terms of our services, again, it ranges between 1500 to up to five k. I would say this, our most popular package is $2,000 or $3,000 per month. But again, in terms of the money you need to invest, you'll have to factor in the cost of the product and the cost of shipping the product. And I bet you've seen your fair share of mistakes along the way. And I'd, I'd like to alleviate some of that stress with our listeners. And like, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see brands making when they jump into the pool, so to speak, when it comes to influencer marketing? As an agency, we will keep an eye on the content that is high performing and escalate the influencers with high engagement to the brand. These influencers are the ones that, one, genuinely love your product, true, have proven themselves in terms of engagement, and three, proven that they're worth investing in in a long-term relationship. This way, it's a cost-effective way for the brand and it provides a level of assurance that the micro-influencers will deliver in terms of generating sales. Now, Esther, our audience, but ours particularly, really values real-life success stories. Could you maybe share a story or a case study of a Shopify business that got involved with your team and started to engage in a micro-influencer campaign? Kind of where were they before got involved with Maven Reach, and then maybe share some successes on the other side, just so we can kind of get a, a warm and fuzzy about how this all works. One of our most notable clients is Lunya, L-U-N-Y-A. They are an elevated women's loungewear company, and they really took off during COVID. As you remember, you know, we're all working from home. No one was wearing jeans or uncomfortable pants. So this company really took off because it provided sophisticated, elevated loungewear that you could wear during a Zoom meeting, but feel very, very comfortable at home. And 
you know, before we partnered, the feedback that I received was their team was very stressed and overwhelmed. I mean, it was a very lean company and employees were being pulled in many directions. And, you know, my point of contact was wearing lots of hats. So I think the hardest thing about influencer marketing is how time consuming it is. One, you have to source influencers, find influencers that align with your brand values. Once you find those people, you have to reach out and there's this back and forth of email communication. A lot of influencers will fall off the map or not respond. So it's this life cycle of having to source influencers, go back and forth with email communication. And then once an influencer expresses interest in the campaign, there's this whole negotiating process, right? Some influencers will only do paid campaigns. So then we'll have to move them to another campaign where like, okay, maybe in the future we can work with them. There's negotiation of like content usage rights, a lot of things. And, you know, again, my point of contact there was wearing a lot of hats and she just was like, hey, I need someone to help me take this off my plate. The goal is to focus on revenue. You know, smaller mom and pop brands, they might need to focus on just getting their brand out there, right? Brand awareness. Lunia was pretty established at the time and their goal and how we measured performance throughout our campaign was sales generated. And I'm really happy to say, you know, we generated $83,000 in revenue with the influencers we source. They were already partnered with an influencer software program and we were able to utilize their software and keep the operational workflow consistent. So it was easy for Lumia. If you are a brand that does not have influencer marketing software, that is completely fine. Again, we meet the brand where they are. So if you're working at a Google Sheet, we can keep it really simple and do that as well. If you're on Grin or Aspire or any of these other influencer marketing platforms, we can work as an extension of your team. You can give us guest access and we will run the campaign fully in that software so that you're getting the best bang for your buck. We were able to fully manage sourcing influencers. We took the email communication, management, and negotiation all off their plate. We also have software that scrapes all media based on hashtags and mentions which also provides real-time analytics, right? You have this dashboard that provides reach, media value, how many influencers are part of the program. If you're on Shopify, our software also directly links. It can integrate fully with Shopify so you can see the exact dollar amount generated from each influencer based on their unique promo code. What I like to tell our clients is the only thing you're responsible for is shipping the product, and providing tracking. If you would like to give us Shopify access, our team can take that off of your plate as well. So if you give us Shopify access, we can ship the product, you know, generate the tracking, we can track the sales and even the commission and commission distribution. So $83,000 in revenue, I would say that was the home run. So yeah, that's one of my proudest moments at Made and Reach. As you know, e-commerce is fiercely competitive and Shopify brands really are constantly looking for an edge. So how do you envision the next few years, let's say 12 to 36 months in the influencer space? Good question. I would say buckle up. (laughs) Influencer marketing is the wild, wild west. There are random videos that go viral. Certain products will sell out of inventory overnight just because of one TikTok video. So I would say, you know, I see video content continuing to be king and short form is the chariot. In the next 12 to 36 months, I'm really interested to see how AI will play into influencer marketing. I have a feeling we'll see more immersive experiences like AR filters and potentially interactive content. Another trend I've been noticing is licensing deals for macro creators. So these larger creators, I've seen, what is it, like RevShare, RevShare deals. And I also have a gut feeling that content is going to get more expensive over the next few years. You know, before you could ship product and 
influencers will post an unboxing and tag the brand in a static post. Now, you know, I've been seeing $250 for a reel or $300 for a TikTok video. So again, I think the product seeding aspect that we do here at Maven Reach is important because it allows you to introduce your brand to so many influencers. And the ones who authentically and genuinely love your brand will genuinely organically post about it on Instagram or TikTok. So it's a nice way to save money. But I do, again, see this trend in fair compensation. So if you're looking for three TikTok videos a month from one influencer for the next six months, that's no longer going to be free. There is this wave of compensating influencers. And I think there is a way to set up a win-win partnership or collaboration where the brand is getting value from the content they're paying for. So yeah, that's where I see it going over the next one to three years. You know, every industry has its narratives and some maybe misconceptions, I'd argue. And, you know, as an expert in your field, do you have any influencer marketing myths that you'd like to address or potentially debunk? Absolutely. I have a few that come to mind. So here are four influencer marketing myths that I would love to address and debunk. First myth, only mega influencers matter. The reality is size and someone's following is not everything. Micro and nano influencers often bring higher engagement and authenticity, which makes them powerful partners for niche audiences. From my experiences, micro and nano influencers bring in the big bucks. They move the needle in terms of sales. Myth number two is that influencer marketing is expensive. The reality is it's about value. And micro-influencers often offer a cost-effective way and provide significant returns. It's not always about the big budgets and paying tens of thousands of dollars for a single post from one macro creator. It's about building long-term partnerships with nano and micro-influencers and Again, it's way more cost-effective and budget-friendly. Myth number three, it's all about the numbers. The reality is, again, quality over quantity. High follower counts do not guarantee impact. I would say genuine engagement and connection with the audience matters more, which is why nano and micro-influencers, they're so tapped into their followers They're top DMing with the same followers over and over again, and they're truly building a community. So, I mean, I fall into this. I follow a bunch of micro-influencers myself, and I cannot tell you the thousands of dollars I've spent on Amazon or Shopify because a nano or micro-influencer has recommended this to me. It almost feels like they're an older sister, whereas macro creators, it feels personally for me, disingenuous. And I'm like, oh, there's another sponsored post. When it's a micro-influencer, I trust their judgment. And lastly, the last myth is results are instant. The reality is that Rome was not built in a day and neither is a solid influencer strategy. Patience is truly key and real impact takes time to resonate. I would say that you know, with our campaigns, we do have a three month minimum just due to the nature of product seeding. You know, month one, we're sourcing, shipping out the initial round of product. Month two is when influencers start posting about the product. So month three and four is usually when we see traction, right? I would say with influencer marketing, attribution is a bit tough, especially if you're also selling on Amazon. But if again, you're on Shopify, we have the ability to integrate that software into our dashboard so you can see the exact dollar amount. But the numbers will come, again, I would probably say month three and month four. Now, these myths can lead you down the wrong path. And all I have to say is that influencer marketing is a nuanced game. And I guarantee it'll be worth the effort. Now, Esther, as we wrap up for today's show, are there any key insights or any kind of final thoughts that you would like to share with our listeners? The advice I would give Shopify brands eager to move the needle and grow their e-commerce business today with influencer marketing is to test various forms of content. 
You know, there's Instagram posts and stories. There's YouTube and TikTok. There's blog posts and podcasts, Twitter or X, (laughs) Facebook campaigns. There's Snapchat, Pinterest, UGC. Here at Maven Reach, obviously the biggest one we do is collaborative giveaways and UGC. You can even think outside of the box and do virtual events or takeovers, which allows influencers to take charge for specific events or campaigns. Diverse content types cater to various audience preferences and platforms in influencer marketing. So I'd recommend that and give it a go. Now, what would you recommend as the next steps for listeners who are keen on tapping into your expertise and want to get involved with micro-influencers? I would say check out our website it is www.mavenreach.com, M-A-V-E-N-R-E-A-C-H.com. You can take a look. We have a couple of case studies up there and a blog. There is a contact us form. So if you're interested in chatting and you want to schedule a call, feel free to do so. I'm always happy to help. Before we wrap up for today's show, I know we chatted in the green room before recording and understand that you would like to offer a special treat for our listeners. Could you share some of the details of that exclusive offer? Absolutely. So if you go to our website and click on the contact us form, just fill out your info and there is a note section. Enter Fastlane there and you will receive 10% off the first three months of services. This is an exclusive offer just for Fastlane listeners and I'm excited to hear from you all. You know, your contributions to helping Shopify brands in the micro-influencer world and even in the partner ecosystem really are quite impressive. I just wanted to thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your insights with our community today. It's been a very eye-opening, but a genuine pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me on the show. It's been an absolute blast diving into the world of influencer marketing and how it aligns with Shopify's mission to make commerce better for everyone. You know, our Maven Reach team is all about weaving authentic connections and enhancing the Shopify experience for our brands and partners. It's fantastic to see the impact of influencer marketing in transforming the commerce landscape. I'd like to say a big kudos to you and your community for being so engaged and curious. Sharing insights over this podcast has been a true pleasure. Let's keep spreading the word and making commerce better together. Thanks again, Steve. Well, that wraps up today's episode of e-commerce fast lane a heartfelt thanks goes out to you for being a loyal listener you know this podcast really aims to arm you with the growth strategies actionable tactics and kind of insider tips from the best in the shopify ecosystem and you know each episode really is crafted to edge you one step closer to growing and scaling a wildly successful direct consumer brand you know your investment of time and listening and learning is deeply valued and I know that you possess a growth mindset and are a constant learner. It's very inspiring. I truly appreciate your journey, whether you're a founder or a marketer. And remember, enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify. Shopify.